Last week we learned how to use React Spring to give life to an animated scene. While the result was full of life, there are some aspects that make it look too amateurish. The colors from different models were not consistent, the lighting isn't interesting, the stage is too basic, and there are no eye-catching effects. When working on a project, that 20% of details make a huge difference in the final result. But that can also take as many hours as building the first 80%. Personally, I don't regret spending the time on it as I'm very happy with the final result. Let's turn our project into something looking more professional. Start by cloning the final repository from the React Spring tutorial from last week. Hit Yarn and Yarn Dev to run it. You can see the colors from some elements are way too pale, like the burgers and hot dog. Let's create a folder named Utils and a file named Warwaterials. This is where we will keep our default setting for our colored materials. Define a constant roughness and metalness we will use for most of the settings. Then an object containing the red, yellow, green, brown, dark brown, pink and metal color. For the metal, we decrease the roughness to have some reflection on it. Now let's fix our models with poor colors. Go to Ice Cream and add Mesh Tendered Material by destructuring the settings we created. Now let's repeat on the palm tree. For the volleyball, we are only passing the colors for the ducks. Let's replace the materials on the burger, on the cannon, the hot dog, ketchup, mustard, and the cauldron. Our colors now look way more consistent. You can see the sparkles are buggy because it is inside the floating object, so they are recreated again and again when it moves. Let's move them next to the cauldron. It looks better, we will fine tune it later. I created with Blender an alternative to the cylinder we were using. I kept the exact same dimensions but made it less flat, with different shapes for the wall and colored each section to add more contrast. Let's add the GLTF into models slash carousel and run npx gltf jsx public models carousel model.gltf. It will generate a React component containing our mesh from our model file. Copy the content and delete it. In the component folder, we create a carousel model.jsx file and paste the model. Rename model in carousel model, fix the path with models carousel for use model and preload. And replace the cylinder and the two boxes with the model. It's already starting to look way better. Time to adjust the lightings. Remove the lights. Let's add an ambient light with a low intensity of 0.3, a directional light on the right with a greenish color and another one on the left with a blue-purple color. Looks nice, it's pretty dark to leave space to add a spotlight to highlight one thing per section later. But before, let's adjust the sparkles again by changing the parameters and moving the position of the cauldron to the floating element. Now it's spread evenly around the cauldron. I told you, it's those details that make a difference. Okay, so let's create a spotlight. Looks great. Let's animate its position and what it looks at. Let's create a current step in our carousel to change it every time our carousel rotates. Now in use frame, let's get our position. We use current step.2 on the array of four steps. And the second array is the exposition for each step. Then we use .get to obtain the numeric value. We do the same for the y and z position. Then we declare a vector with those three points and lerp our spotlight to it. We do the same for where our spotlight looks at, the target. We only do it for the X and Z because we always target zero on the Y axis. Then we lerp the target to that position. For the target, we need to call update matrix world to tell the spotlight to update where it looks at. Let's define our spotlight speed and get our delta from the use frame. Looks very cool. It seems like the cannon is aiming at the target. The witch looks more terrific. 
and the beach volley game looks like more a sunset volleyball game. Time to add effects. Yarn add React 3 post processing. In app next to our experience, add the effect composer component. It will contain all our post processing effects. You can discover all the effects and how to use them from the documentation. Let's add the bloom, vignette, and depth of field effects. To find the perfect parameters, I use Leva instead of editing the code a million times. Oops, forgot to remove the hidden prop in main.jsx. So look on the edges, it looks black. This is uh, the vignetting effect. The bloom, we can't see it yet, but trust me, it will shine soon. The depth of field effect helps us to blurry the background and set the focus on the current step in front of us. Let's add my favorite effect, scanline. Adjust the scanline density with lever. And set the opacity to 0.1 to not make it too present. Now it adds a nice retro wave touch. I was disappointed to not being able to rotate the ferris wheel. It would take too much time reworking the model than creating the logic. So I decided to add a rotating light that would act as the spirit of the wheel that rotates when it's off. Let's create a mesh containing a point light, a sphere geometry and a mesh standard material with the yellow from more materials, the emissive to the yellow color and an emissive intensity of 4. We need to add tone mapped to false to avoid the emissive intensity to be maxed at 1. Let's store our reference to it and pause the animation on the carousel. Currently our sphere is hidden, but you can see the light it produces on the wall behind. Let's animate it. In use frame, let's get the state to have the elapsed time and multiply it by 6 to have the speed. To play back and forth our animation, we will declare a distance variable that used mat.sin from the elapsed time multiplied by 0.8. So we will have values between minus 0.8 and 0.8, as the sin curve looks like this. Then we animate our light, for the exposition we multiply the sinus of our speed by the distance, and for the y we do the same with the cosinus. Perfect, our ferris wheel spirit is rotating and blooming. Now let's add progression lights to our carousel. Let's create a component named carousel lights, add it next to the carousel model, declare the number of lights we want, and let's use the map to create our 42 lights. To find the formula, I used ChatGPT. I knew the logic, but not the exact formula, so I saved some time. For each, we have an emissive sphere. Now they are all blooming. Let's animate them. We will need the carousel lights to be aware of the current step. So let's get a current step spring props and pass it from the carousel component. And let's make available our step duration by exporting it. We will need the index of the last light turned on with Kermax light the current step, and if it's in it or not. The solution I came with is a bit hacky. It's because React Spring animations are physics based, so I have no way to know their exact duration. It would have been simpler to use JSAP timeline and trigger manually the Spring animations to keep the control. So what we will do is a use effect every time our current step changes. We will run a set interval function that will turn on the next light. We start by checking in the current step spring if the step changed. That way, if our timing isn't perfect, we can synchronize it back. It will kill our set interval and create a new one. The timing on the set interval is the step duration plus 800 milliseconds. Except it the first time because we don't have an animation the first time. Divided by the number of light multiplied by the four steps, so we have all the lights. Then we set init to true and return a clear interval for every time current step changes, we create a new precise one. In our map function, let's check if our light at a specific index is active. We define three colors, red, green, and blue, and we select the emissive color with a modulo three to have a series of red, green, blue lights. We set the emissive intensity only if our light is on. Let's unpause our carousel and hide lever.
Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. It doesn't cover one particular technical thing, but I thought it was great to share how you can always go further with your projects to stand out. Let me share a bit with you what's coming in the next videos in a non-particular order. Physics, online game, creating a portfolio, reproducing good-looking effects from existing websites, baking with Blender, and extended reality. So be patient my friends and subscribe if you want to learn it. To help you wait until the release of those tutorials, why not train a bit more on your React 3 Fiber skill with this video here?